Dear guests, a very welcome to our lifestyle program. Today is a special day. Why is the day very special? I will tell you. I would like to say in a couple of different languages like Goedemorgen, Buenos Dias, Good Morning, Bonjour, and Good Morning again. We can say good evening because it will be emitted at 7 o'clock in the afternoon. Anyway, Lionel Ferrier is our, in our person who we will uh, give a nice interview today. A man with a lot of experience from the other side of the water. That means from America, Central America. I would like to welcome him, Lionel, welcome you to our studio. Costa del Sol TV. Good morning. Good morning to you, really, and thank you very much for having me. I look forward to having this uh, chat with you, and uh, look forward uh, that uh, and hope that the listeners and viewers uh, will enjoy. Also, I'm not uh, here to say anything extra, with the exception of the certain experiences that I've had and how my life has gone. Thank you again for having me. And that's what it's all about. Mm. We had an interview before we doing the interview live here in the studio. And I must really tell you, Lionel, for me it was exceptional to listen to you. So I'm very pleased once again to have you sitting in front of me. Shall we both go back in about the time when you were born? For example... That's a good start. Where, where have you born? Where have you been born? <coughs> I was born in Suriname, which was uh, <coughs> is started as the, as, uh, in South America, the three Guyanas. You have the Dutch Guyana, French Guyana, <coughs> and British Guyana in those days. Suriname sits right between the two, and uh, there so I was born uh, 77 years ago. Oopa. <laughs> and <laughs> Young man. Yeah. And well, but anyhow, I was, uh, I moved very quickly after I was born, right uh, at the ending of the last war. Uh, my father, who had been in the army during those days, he was a technician, radio operator and what have you, he uh, moved, uh, he they were looking in the Netherlands Antilles for uh, persons of uh, technical knowledge, specifically with uh, radio operating. Okay. And so he would, he got a good job over, over there. And obviously my mother and I followed uh, uh, about four months after I was born. So I basically never lived actually in Suriname. I've lived uh, outside of Suriname most of all my life. So, so you, from Suriname you went to? Uh, to first to uh, uh, Curaçao, the Netherlands Antilles then, and ah, from yeah. uh, uh, Curaçao to Aruba, uh, where I lived for 13 years and afterwards a short while in, in the Netherlands, and then specifically to uh, St. Martin, Dutch Caribbean, of course, and in the United States I lived as well, and of course here in Spain. So you've been you spent more years in the Caribbean than in Europe. Absolutely, because your last what, year what, what, uh, living living yeah, yes, yes 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what is your opinion about let's say today about the Caribbeans? Is it too massificated, or was it? so different when you were born that you say wow that was that was paradise as far as i'm concerned there are many nations in the caribbean who are still paradise how it is today is just like the rest of the world mm -hmm. there's so many problems in this world at the moment and the caribbean particularly because there you have very tiny islands and you have very large yeah. islands um, the larger islands uh, have a better way of surviving, quote-unquote, uh, the island itself because of agriculture, uh, specifically fisheries, which, for instance, St. Martin had one time too. So uh, 
it's, uh, it's very often a struggle. And uh, many years ago, for instance, the people of uh, the Netherlands Antilles, and specifically St. Martin, by the way, who's already divided in two nations, the northern part is French, the southern part is Dutch. Who did yeah? that? Huh? Who did that? Well, <laughs> because it was a, it, wasn't it a Dutch co uh, colony? Yes, it was a, but a Dutch part of it. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was between Dutch and French. And uh, it is now 350 odd years that, oh, yeah. that it is. Uh, before our time. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they've always lived in uh, peaceful harmony. That's perfect. On this, That's on nice. this tiny island. Um, but, you know, even though people were from France as well as from Holland, but they were all Caribbean people, yeah? Born there, what have you, from, of course, um, those who had come and decided to stay. Uh, it's still lovely. Yeah. So, what was your age when you left Suriname? And what was your, in your mind, playing to say, when I'm a big boy, about around 20 or something like that, I would be a pilot, I will be an architect, I will be a doctor. What, was your, what would you like to be in, in your professional life? Well, um, when I left Suriname, I was only four months old. Oh, well, that's, so yeah, 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 yeah. That. Okay, yeah. okay. So, <laughs> much of a thought I haven't given. I've, uh, <coughs> the aviation has always attracted me. I've always loved flying. Um, I obtained my uh, pilot's license as well many years ago. That itself uh, was uh, probably a story to know because um, there was no flight school. And, uh, but there was a group of men specifically who wanted to learn to fly. And uh, <laughs> decided to buy a small aircraft, a single <laughs> engine aircraft. And <laughs> we all put some money in the those days t together, yeah, and some more than others, and uh, a uh, second, third, fourth hand uh, Piper Cherokee was purchased, a single engine uh, aircraft. But in any case, um, we had no instructors, so how did we learn? Among the group that we, who started this club, we had people who were air traffic controllers, meteorologists, radio operators, aircraft mechanics, etc., etc. And with that group, we um, started to get some lessons and people who knew uh, uh, about things. But yes, uh, flying has always been uh, a tremendous passion for me and my brother as well. He's blessed to uh, still having a beautiful uh, twin engine uh, aircraft, pressurized. Um, and uh, our turbo, I should say. And um, it's a blessing to go back. I do not fly regularly anymore um, because, well, to begin with, uh, my medical <laughs> has expired and I haven't made sufficient hours because I do not fly sufficiently. But uh, when I go back, uh, I have the blessing to uh, have quite some friends who do have aircraft uh, to go and uh, get back uh, behind the the stick, so Do you go um, frequently back or is that now say, okay, we are now in Spain, I'm settled here, I feel happy, but the Caribbean is the Caribbean. Yes, but uh, I, I've been blessed, I think, by even though St. Martin was so small, the thing that stuck out with St. Martin, of as far as I'm concerned, the, the total Caribbean, is that St. Martin has always been very international. And I think the whole world basically knows where St. Martin sits because of what is on always coming on television and how the aircraft, big planes, land on that one strip, 1,300 uh, meters uh, landing, yeah, uh, from all over the world. And because the flights, they come literally over the beach. And is, is that where the, the people staying? And Okay, that's the, that's we see that on TV many yeah, times. That's, that's in Marte, yeah. That's in yeah. Martin. Okay. But St. Martin was always also known and still is for its uh, gastronomy. Fantastic food. Uh, French, uh, French side. Yep. 
But apart from that, we have international cuisine. I mean, you name it and you would basically have it, you can say it. Uh, so, uh, and therefore, it has attracted many people from all over the world. That's why you have got great hotels. The, other, the, other, the, the negative thing is that St. Martin sits in the hurricane belt. So yeah. we've had our share of hurricanes, like the majority of the Caribbean, as well as Florida, that hurricanes uh, tend to pass there to say hello and yeah. we say goodbye. Yeah. And <laughs> but uh, now so that's uh, because of being international, um, we never felt, uh, you know, this tiny, one. The, although there are lots of people are in those days that have never left, had never left the island. It's like, and it's like a brother and sister harmony. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, each nation has people who do not agree, especially when Always. it comes to politics, Always. for instance. Yeah. yeah, they've got their own opinions and agendas and what have you, that's worldwide. So, uh, but uh, because of the, 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 uh, the fact of being international, of so many people, I can't remember how many nationalities of, uh, are living in St. Martin at the moment, but I think there was at one particular moment you had at least one, uh, about 90, 92 different nationalities. Impressive. It's, it's, it's incredible, even if there were maybe just only one. Uh, and that's, that was the beauty. And because of the, the St. Martin, is, is between a number of islands that up to today as well, yeah, you have to the north, you have the island of Anguilla. Uh, <coughs> to the west, uh, you, have, uh, you have the island of St. Bart's. I name these two specifically because the rich and famous still come to St. Martin very often to land there, stay there, and then possibly and then go to Anguilla. Anguilla is only uh, nine miles at the shortest end. That's nothing. That is nothing miles. So you get a ferry every day. And uh, uh, so we were, uh, we were rather free. And of course, both my brother and I have been flying uh, tremendously a lot, either alone or, or the two of us together. Yeah. Many uh, times we just took the plane, flew to Puerto Rico, to Florida, I would have you. So you felt pretty um, international. How, how far is away? How, so you live on, 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 on in, in um, St. Marte, and from there to take the plane, how many flight hours you need to go to, for example, Miami? To Miami depends on the type of aircraft you go with. Yeah, of course. If you, yeah. if you would yeah. go uh, uh, with a... Uh, the one you flew. Jet. The one we flew, well, you, you, the smallest plane I ever flew to go to Miami was a Piper, Piper Aztec. Yeah, and that meant that we had to stop like uh, at least once uh, to refuel. Okay. Uh, but you can count um, more or less uh, eight hours, seven or eight hours. Eight uh, hours. Yeah. And in miles? Yeah. In miles, you're talking about a thousand. Thousand miles, so uh, 1,800 kilometers yeah, more or yeah, less. Yeah. Oh, that's not much. Yeah. It's very close. Yeah. Um, Lionel, mm, a part of your love for to be pilot or flying planes, yeah. um, what did you did in your professional life in America and in, 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 in the Caribbean islands? Well, I was an insurance broker. Okay. Yeah. Um, I worked for, uh, I started off working for uh, a gentleman who had many businesses uh, on the island and was also a friend of the family for many years. Um, unfortunately, he's passed away now, but uh, I started to work with him. He had a, uh, an insurance agency uh, and um, I became the head of that, uh, of that section of the company, mm -hmm. the insurance brokerage. And eventually the years went by and uh, I uh, started my own company. Um, we uh, represented uh, large, two largest Dutch companies in those days, up to today, the Netherlands of 1845 and the uh, Aegon, which uh, those, those yep. days were called EN, EN, NEN, then changed to NEA and then Aegon. Uh, and I got also training from those companies myself, and we uh, represented Lloyd's uh, firms, Lloyd's of London. 
And I, at one particular moment, I was a survey agent as well for, uh, for Lloyd's. And, and that's basically what it is. During that time, uh, I, was, I got married as well, of course, and uh, my, uh, my late wife now uh, was um, working for one of the largest uh, or best known uh, jewelry stores. And at one particular moment she said, you know, let's start something ourselves. Yeah, and uh, put some money together and put it in, what have you. And uh, so we went to the jewelry business as well. And did some import and export business. Uh, and that's the way uh, Nutter started to grow. Nice, 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 nice. Full of inventions, <laughs> isn't it? Um, if I say your, your mom and dad, did they have the influence in, in, in your future, in your professional life, in your, protect, in your uh, projection about what, you, what you've done and what you've been? Absolutely. I thank God for my, the parents that I've had. Um, we had a father who was rather very stern, but he had a great heart. And uh, my mother, like every person, says, your mom mother, is mom. Mom is mom. Yeah. yeah. So he says, I had the best mom in the world, yep. and you will say the same. Yep. Yeah. So that goes for, 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 for everyone. But certainly we had, and uh, the, they, they were very caring. And uh, what, for instance, my mother, because my father uh, was one part of the radio operator, he became the acting prosecutor for St. Martin, because during Aruba, while he was in Aruba, he started to uh, uh, study law. Yeah. <coughs> But then he was uh, transferred to uh, the Windward Islands, uh, uh, St. Martin, and he, uh, uh, he was the, the prosecutor for the acting prosecutor for the, for the Dutch Windward Islands at that time. Um, my mother, uh, she spent a lot of time with, with us, with lots of caring, because uh, she was more than a mom because she was a friend. She, uh, she played ball with us. We were just the two of us. And we did uh, things, swimming and what have you. So, but then she also managed a uh, uh, perfume store for a large company in Curso, which had in most of the islands uh, uh, at least one. And in St. Martin, at one particular moment, they had three or four four branches of which she has been the uh, director for many 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 years so uh, yes i, I think it was the real moment when you start with your family and you set up what you set up it was the right moment to do then because today it's different you know i think it's, I, I you were the first maybe one of 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 one of the first who you know with with with, with everything um not really there, there, there is St. Martin particularly, where I lived most of my uh, younger age, um, had already a lot of people who uh, were, um, I would say that, visionaries or wanted to start businesses. Um, possibly I was one of them too, yeah. But uh, again, uh, as small as St. Martin was, it was not known. There are many islands around, yeah, that very often people came to the island to purchase things, yeah, and the influence uh, that, it, that, that it had uh, because of the, the, the famous people that came. The international, international. Yeah, 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 yeah. They brought things back. Mm -hmm. it, it's unbelievable. The, the, the people that I, and not only I, I've had the pleasure of meeting, uh, one was, for instance, Benny Goodman. The clarinetist. Oh, yeah, he used to have a house in St. Martin. He, be, he became my client. At the time, I have, was invited for lunch at his place, yeah, and he would live on the, over on the other side of a hill, and I would drive with my car and I would stop a moment, and I would hear his clarinet music filling up and <laughs> coming over the hill. Things. But, uh, you know, Alain Delon used to come to St. Martin with Mireille Dard. Uh, and you can go on and on. Harry Belafonte, I've had a 
pleasure of knowing him personally. And not only I, but many people because they were just down to earth. They could be themselves. That was the thing. Very, very yeah. interesting because today it's different and it's just what you say. They can't and or they can be themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. Find today a place where you can be yourself. It's very difficult because yes. you have to build a big wall that nobody yeah. can see you, etc., etc., and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah. After you, um, you worked in America, in the USA? Yes. What did you did there? Well, I uh, continued at my brokerage, a bro okay. at a brokerage firm there, <coughs> and jewelry specifically. Okay. Did you mm, went back then to the islands or you went straight to Europe? Have you been there for no, a long no, no, time? No, no. no. I, uh, uh, I had a business in St. Martin also. <coughs> then I, uh, I was invited to, uh, to go into the politics. Opa. Opa. <laughs> Opa. <laughs> I decided to do it. Eh? Yeah, I discussed it with uh, my family and they said, well, you have to do what you think you have to do. Yeah, why not? And I, uh, I entered into politics. So um, the uh, party that I, uh, that I went for was actually opposite the party that I always was for. But things didn't go as well in my mind as it was supposed to be. And I rebelled a little bit and said, no, basta ya, in my opinion. And uh, <coughs> so I, uh, uh, the, uh, the party leader of the, uh, the greatest opposition said, okay, <coughs> there was the uh, first election for commissioners and I uh, was placed on the slate and I didn't get sufficient votes and I didn't go. And about six months thereafter, uh, there was the parliamentary uh, elections <coughs> for the Netherlands Sillies and specifically St. Martin. And I was called to say, listen, uh, we, want you to, uh, we want you to be candidate again on our slate <coughs> and uh, we'll pl put you, and they put me on, the, I believe it was the seventh position. I said, how is that possible? Because so many people have been there for years and years, and you're bringing me out. He says, no, <coughs> we would like you to go to Parliament for us, to represent us as Senator. Long story short, we went to the elections. Uh, I didn't have the sufficient votes, but it, it came out, and I was named, uh, I went uh, straight to Parliament in 1989, I think it was, yeah. So quite some moons ago, and uh, it was a it was a blessing, absolutely a blessing. But in the meantime, in all these years before, I uh, I became the president of a uh, an organization, an NGO uh, called Sede Antillas, Central of the Nelson Antilles, and it was uh, it was a uh, it was most gratifying work that I've ever done because it was trying to help those who couldn't help themselves. I would just say, yeah, yeah. And that was so beautiful. It was pro Deo, yep, but, and not for myself, all, the whole board. And on each island, on six islands of the Dutch Caribbean, there was a Sid And I said, for one year I was also the president of, for all the six islands. <coughs> and I've done that for, uh, 13 years, wow. yeah, and uh, it was it was it was fantastic. Uh, people who had uh, the knowledge, but for instance, not the financial means, yep. and um, banks were giving money, but also uh, uh, companies in the in in, in in sorry in Holland and the Netherlands who saw the need that was there, and we were one of the venues where they could help because they trusted the NGO which uh, we, we led and uh, fantastic uh, and um, one of the pleasure was in one particular moment uh, there was a request uh, or uh, the uh, um, the name escapes me right at, the, at this moment but in any case there was a center needed to be built for people uh, for that had no means to go to school because of their physical 
situation. So it's a center to, to have them a daycare center. Okay. And uh, with the, the funds that we were able to obtain, that was built. And that those days it was 900,000 guilders. So more or less then was five, 500, 500,000 US dollars. And, um, and uh, the highlight was that in those days, the also Queen Juliana of the Netherlands visited. And was also there with the help of the opening. Uh, of it. And uh, I was blessed to be part of the ceremonies. Uh, that was, that was what a story. Was, yeah, it was, it is, it's beautiful. This but, but I, I, I honestly may think that that must give in your heart such a satisfaction, what you done then, in that time. It is, it is the best thing that I've done. I can Because believe. it had nothing to do with earning money. Yeah, exactly. It's it pro deo. It, pro deo. Yeah. And it, it had to do with helping those that needed help. And uh, Sid Antius has, has done so at a most marvelous manner. As a matter of fact, uh, Queen Beatrix, who came after Queen Juliana, yep. blessed me yeah, for the work that I did uh, by being decorated by Her Majesty. Well in done. In membership in the Order of uh, Oranje Nassau, House of Orange. That was in March 2000, so 23 years ago. Yeah. You will never forget it, uh, Lionel. <laughs> who can? Yeah, who can? Yeah, no, I mean, if, yeah. if <coughs> all what has to do, it, it's not with the royal family, but mm. it's just um, the way you've worked, the possibilities you had, the people you knew, and it was all on the right time to yes. say, we do this, you with your knowledge, and they sure. with that, and, and then help other people. That's so important. That's Today, great. that's nearly impossible to find. Yeah. Uh, the, the world is, is upside down right now. It is. The world is totally upside down. And uh, I... Uh, uh, it's I'm only money, it's only money. It, money, yes, but uh, people in general are becoming more um, egoistic. And uh, we are all part of it, yeah? But the me, the me, the I, uh, has become too great, yeah? And uh, it, it, they used to say, me, myself, and I, you know, three persons. <laughs> me, myself, and I. And that has become overwhelming uh, in this world. But uh, also that shall pass, uh, I hope. I'm a fervent, uh, I believe in God. Yeah, and that also is nowadays, if you say you believe in God, uh, uh, eyes are raised and what have you. Well, <coughs> bless everybody and uh, I think uh, it's good. Be with yourself, be friend of yourself, help people, yeah. family and, and, and just be nice for each other. That, that, that's, I think that's the most beautiful way there is. See, the whole thing is, if I may, if I want to call you my friend, or you want to say hello to me, uh, really, um, I can stick out my hand, and if you go and grab that hand, I can do like this and pump. It <laughs> doesn't mean a thing. No. Yeah? And I'm not suggesting that everybody has to be shaking, shaking a hand, of course not. But uh, just the mere fact. That, and that's why, for instance, countries like Spain, yeah, the abrazo, yeah, and to say that, that alone, yeah, makes it so special, yeah, hola, que tal, you know, and, uh, but it, in, in too many nations, uh, that uh, friendship doesn't mean that when you give a handshake or the abrazo, that at times the person, <laughs> maybe yourself, can be trusted, because we have to be wise, and, uh, and take matters as they, they come. We have to be wise as possible. Voila. We have to read and to read between the lines. Certainly. Um, we still didn't talk about where you are now because 
Spain must be something special for you as well. Certainly. How did it came? When, when was your idea, where were you X years ago, before you came to Spain and said, Spain could be for me something for to retirement? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I, was in the, I, was usually, I was living in the United States and uh, <clears throat> uh, I uh, was married then and the person, we divorced, let's put it that way. And it was not such a nice divorce. Can happen. Yep. But <clears throat> after being bombarded every day with things, yeah, and suddenly out of the clear blue sky, an acquaintance of mine who was living in Spain said, Lionel, uh, I'm starting a, uh, uh, I want to build some villas here. Would you be interested in joining? And I thought, por que no? Why not? Yeah. And uh, I, uh, as I said, it was not such a nice divorce and things every day, basically. And said, you know what, I'll do so. And I said, I'll go there for a year and I'll, uh, see, what's I'll see what's happening. And that's, that's the way uh, I came to Spain. That's 20, about close, yeah, about 20 years ago. No, time flies. And... Uh, <coughs> From one year, <laughs> matters moved on, and lo and behold, after after two or three years, uh, I was blessed to meeting a beautiful lady here. Spain is is an excellent country to <laughs> meet people. I tell you, <laughs> Spain is different. Absolutely, and I'm still blessed uh, with a lady and. Uh, Anyhow, so um, in the interim, I retired. Yeah, I'm pensioner at the moment, of course. Yeah, still doing my uh, things. I'm autonomo, uh, uh, consultant actually, advisor, and uh, so uh, I enjoy every bit in Spain. Of course, speaking the language helps. Yeah, and that's and the most uh, important thing. You yeah. speak, you speak very good Spanish. Thank you, and. Uh, Spain has so much, every nation has so much to offer. Like even the tiny island of St. Martin has so much to offer. So every nation, no matter how small, yep. no matter how large, yep. it has something to offer. And what we do now at times, because after COVID everything came to a halt, uh, we would say, okay, let's get lost. And we would take a carry-on, throw it in the back of the car, and went to the direction where the nose sh showed us to go. Not to, let's go <laughs> explore. And that actually came from, <laughs> it wasn't a, was a, that uh, came from my lady's uh, daughter, as a matter of fact, uh, who said, no, let's get lost, mom. <laughs> and we have continued that track because Spain has got so much to offer. Oops. And the history, it's amazing. You can, you can you drive up. You can drive three lifetimes yes. and still yes. not see it. And it is so diverse. Yeah. Uh, at times we drive because we love nature. You drive, and I, just looking at the geology. You see, if you see, for instance, if you sit at the train or you with the car you're driving, you see the the earth, is brown, gray, red, yellow. The, the, the types of soil that they have here. And I said, I always say, you know, it's so fertile. It is. You, ba you yeah. basically throw a it seed it is, it is. And, and, and poops if it gets the water. So, yes, so uh, it, 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 it's fantastic and we, we enjoyed it uh, very much. Sometimes, you know, if, if people call you from, from wherever and Willie, We've seen on TV that it's very, very bad weather with 20 degrees under zero. Uh, momentito. We don't have that because Spain is, as well, what you said, is very big. 
If we take the car from here to Barcelona, you drive 1,000 kilometers and up to the frontier, it's another 200. So it's a large of more or less 1,300 kilometers. So uh, just imagine that there is what you said, so much, so much to discover in this country. We only have to see Andalusia. It's so beautiful. There is so m many culture, yeah. what the Arabs did here, uh, what they left here and what we have the pleasure to meet, to see, to touch. Absolutely. And, and the people, uh, honestly, I like very much this place where I live already now for 44 years. Mm. And it's, it's, I say it most of the time, it's Spain is different, yes, but Andalusia is still more different. Mm -hmm. You need to know to feel and if you are integrated, then you get the feedback from the people. A few, you don't need that much people. You need the right people to have on your side, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think. <laughs> so, um, doing jobs, let's say the other way. You did your professional life. You did a lot of uh, things free of charge, what we say, but you still doing or you did as well with Rotary. Yes. Yeah. And how is that? Well, <coughs> at the moment... Because that's very known in the world, Rotary. A rotary is very known. Helping it people. Is, it is one of the, the best international yeah. clubs. Yeah. Not as much as used to be today anymore, but uh, we've... Uh, uh, rotary International has been a tremendous part of me. All my life. I'm right now in the stage of being senior active. Yeah? And I'm just remember I'm still walking with my, my, my pin, but it's senior active. Uh, 50 years of rota being wow. Rotarians is a long time. And uh, uh, indeed, but Rotary, but also the other clubs like this. It's also the lines and, yeah, and, and foster and parents foster plan. Foster plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hats off to them. Yes, yes. Hats off to them, yeah. uh, because that's where those that want to help their uh, their uh, communion in any shape or form and have the means, and means not speaking financially only, but the knowledge, yeah, and the uh, experience to get things done, and the context. Yeah, it's tremendous as to help build the community. So, uh, yeah, Rotary for me is, uh, has always been uh, fantastic. Uh, I went to, for instance, uh, to give you an example how international, how great it is. Uh, I, I was in New York and I had to fly to Rome for the uh, International Convention of Rotary in, in Rome uh, many years ago. And I flew via New York. And in New York, th that flight, particularly to Rome, were only Rotarians. The pain was packed with Rotarians. And my then wife and I uh, were also on the flight. And one particular moment, you know, while r we could move about, a few Rotarians came by and one of them said, hey, uh, we're not going to go to that and that particular meeting because the majority here yeah, uh, have, have helped to uh, uh, get the, uh, something with, with the eyes of a nation in Africa. And we have invited them to come to Rome. So the children were coming, they, they, they rented a place, a small hotel where all of them could stay. Oh no. And said, Lionel says, when we're there, we will not go to that activity from Rotary. We're going to entertain these children. And to give you an idea, they were so excited. And by that excitement, I became excited. Yeah, to, 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 to do that. So they had, they had flown over the kids yeah, who they had had problems with their eyes, and had been treated and operated upon by returns, by Rotarian doctors or whatever. It is, it's amazing. Yeah, and that's, that's um, maybe sometimes it's a dream, but I'm just really hoping that the world's eyes could open to, to these things again. There are, and there are good people. Yeah, yeah. There yes, really the are. Is, there, there, the world is loaded with good people. Yeah. 
it is very often those that are quote unquote bad um, are in the minority but usually have a big mouth. Sorry to say it that way. And whether it is frustration, whatever it may be, um, but there, thankfully there are still many, many more, but the world is more filled with good people than bad. I'm convinced of that. Um, I remember one person in, in Malaga, uh, search, surgery, and he is uh, normally, uh, if he have to intervent, it's cancer. Mm. But he goes once or twice a year to wherever in the world, most of the times Africa or South America, yeah. he is there for 14 days or even a bit more, makes around 100 operations, not with cancer, but for children, with little things, the knees or whatever, yeah. for free. Yeah. Uh, you know, That's the beauty. That is the beauty of, the of beauty. life. Sure. Those Absolutely. persons are in Malaga as well. And I suppose in wherever, you know, mm -hmm. and they, more normally you don't hear that so much or it's maybe not so much on TV, mm -hmm. but they should really have a big, big, big uh, announcement what they are doing that others should follow. And what I think then, uh, Leonel, is that if you give one euro, is really that euro going there? Because that's the other question what a lot of people ask. Oh yes, oh you yes. Know, and that is, the world is what you say, so ups and down. And, Absolutely. And, and that's what I, uh, I don't want to say I hate that, but um, it would be so nice that, that you really know what, what you give, that it all goes there to help to make that whatever. That it reaches its final destination, that is the correct destination. Exactly. And that's not wasted or put in there pockets or whatever you are scrolling. And that's, that hurts. Yep. That hurts a lot. And it leaves, and that unfortunately has consequences. It's a like lot. a domino effect. Yeah. That uh, when you give money and it doesn't reach for the purpose it was raised, yeah, next time somebody legitimately comes and asks for, can you please help? People start and thinking say, twice before, yep. will I, shall I, I have yep. an experience and whatever you, but thankfully there's still people who do that and companies who, uh, who that's do it graciously. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, not, it's not that easy. Eh? I yeah. mean, uh, to go to people and ask for money for what kind of reason it is. Um, people who try to make it to help people in Mali, uh, which is a difficult situation there because they're uh, terrorists and war, but they still try to do and help them with water because there's no water there. There's, there's nothing. They try to make their own uh, let they say the garden where they can tail the, the vegetables and things like heads that. Heads off. Heads off for those people. Chapeau. And they really mm. go around here on the coast yes. asking to the football clubs and whoever just bit by bit they come to an amount of 10,000 euros, mm. 15,000 euros mm. and it helps. And that is so important mm. and nice to hear afterwards. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you don't see it that big on TV. You see it today on internet, yeah. which is, I would say, a lower level, not a lower level, but more people should know. More people should know what the good people are yes. doing, and that yeah. is so important, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, your Rotary uh, project, over 50 years, mamma mia, I, I'm, I'm really amazing about that because um, to meet people who, who have their own a professional destination in the world mm. and still have time to do that is, is, is as well to say uh, I take my head off for you really well, it is it is again it, it comes back and I don't want to sound like I'm a saint because I'm not <laughs> but it is to be able knowing that Rotary and such like organizations are working to help people help their community in other words, for the betterment, not for self uh, gratefully purposes. Um, and, and I think that's what, has, what I have 
drawn me always to uh, be a Rotarian, um, that whole ID, you know. And the motto of Rotary also is service above self. Yeah, it's not self-service. It's no. <laughs> <laughs> service yeah. above, above self. self. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's what uh, I inspire or want people to understand that um, the, uh, if you are doing something to help your neighbor and the person is helped, the satisfaction that you personally get them should, is so gratifying, at least for me and for many people, yeah, that you will do it again with pleasure. And that's what I think uh, maybe the message today <laughs> should be. So what would be your next step? If, if there is a next step, or is, is it nearly to say, I continuing with the Rotary, I continue with helping. You have your consultancy, that's what you're doing as well. Sure. That means as well, helping a little bit the other way, but helping other people as well. Is that at the moment what, what, what is taking your time? Um, mainly, yes. I, <coughs> I cannot see the future. Yes, and nobody. And nobody can, so obviously. And I'm taking every day, as they say, carpe diem. Grab every day, enjoy it as if it would be your last. Yes. Yeah. And but live with an attitude, yes, that I will stretch this as far as I can. And there's so many who are bedridden, have have problems, physically, mentally, mm. financially. Uh, and and the, 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 the part is that this world is so unevenly divided when it comes to things, having, not having. The gap is huge, is huge. And uh, if everyone would just take a moment and smell the roses and say, if I had been him or her, how would I feel? What could I do? And uh, uh, how can I help? Should be part of that, yeah, if you can. Yeah, um, yes. So um, there are no plans. I'm continuing to doing what I'm doing uh, because I enjoy life. I've had my, I've had many things. I've been operated too many a times, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and yes, I'm getting younger. <laughs> Here you go, attitude. <laughs> So. That's the attitude. <laughs> so voila. That sounds very good. Um, you're still going to um, see family? Um, yes. If, if you can, if you... Because so they're not living all here, they're no. living... Yes. Well, it says, uh, the, the family is spread uh, in the Netherlands, the United States, the Caribbean, and some other places yet. So um, try to do it at least once, sometimes twice a year. You know, Perfect. because uh, and you know, trying to see if we can combine things that, yeah, that yeah, uh, yeah. that's the way we can do it. And they coming here? As well? Oh yes, at times. Yeah, yeah. I it's mean, of course, it's yes. nice for them from oh, home yes. at least to <coughs> home on this beautiful at the moment in, in the springtime, but to come to here and to Spain and to have the temperature yeah. perfect. Yeah, it could be nice. The very first year that I came to uh, to Spain, <coughs> I stood on. on <laughs> I stood on the beach in Marbella and I was, I, I, suddenly I got, and I, I've always walked with a camera. Today, of course, you have your cell, <laughs> your mobile, but, and uh, what struck me, it was in the, during all, yeah, winter time, and it was so beautiful because I stood on the beach, I saw, I was between the palm trees, and in the background, you had Sierra Nevada, with the snow on it. And I, with friends, we used to go, you know, two hours and 15 minutes in the car, boop, and you're on the, <laughs> you're on the, sl on the slopes. I mean, geez, <laughs> hello. A few <laughs> places in the world where you can do that. Isn't that? And, and it was, what, you, just you can, the you can stay on the skis <laughs> if you leave your home. Yeah. If you leave your home yeah. at seven o'clock in the morning, what? at 10, you can be in the Sierra Nevada. Exactly. At one o'clock you come back and at three you in Al Muñeca taking the sun. Exactly. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. 
while in the, in the sun you can also have in of course of course of course, but of course. But I mean the water of course the water yeah, basically yeah. You can take a dip if you want yes. if, you're, if you're brave enough <laughs> all right yeah. um lionel um any questions left you think any maybe i forgot something to ask you i don't know because your life is was very bright um, so many things to do in the world helping again the people what for me is the most exciting thing to do if you have the possibility because you need the money as well you can say yes but no 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 you need a little bit of that to start something to do for other people mm. you can do that with other people but if you want to start it yourself you need something and to say I'm doing this for those people because they need it and that is so nice I would like to 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 end with that and to say our program at least I mean right that um, Rotary is is I say Rotary because you are more over 50 years you involved with that so I think that's a, a good point to say thank you so much for what you all have told us because it's more than interesting where you start where have you been born you did america you did the caribbean you were in holland you came to spain and so on and so on and so on and you were very very successful in life and that is smashing good a successful man in life doing things for other people i would mm. say thank you very much for coming to the studio and don't forget that we are here we can help I don't want to say to people here we are to help but mm -hmm. we always can do something for the people thank you very much uh, Lionel and uh, we take a coffee later on mm -hmm. Senores y señores um, ladies and gentlemen I'm very glad that uh, Lionel was here today so with this talk about the Rotary and his history I would like to thank you very much and hope to see you the next time back on Lifestyle. So take care, good luck, and here we are again. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you very much as well. Pleasure. Enjoyed every bit. Pleasure. Thank you.